Hey, um, there you go again. You are most welcome to this uh, series of short video teachings. My name is Mustafa Abubakar and I am a pastor at Christ Bible Church here in Mombasa, uh, Kenya, Mombasa Island in Kenya. Uh, now, in our last video, we started a study uh, on the holiness of God, the holiness of God, one of his uh, many attributes. And uh, I just gave you a few texts and verses from the scriptures which plainly and clearly show that our God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is indeed a holy God. He is a holy God. And I promised you that uh, in the next video, which is this one, we will uh, start defining the holiness of God. We will give a working definition of the holiness of God. When the Bible tells us that our God is a holy God, what exactly does it mean? What is the meaning of the holiness of God? That is what I want us to uh, consider and learn together beginning in this uh, uh, video. Now, the holiness of God has two definitions. There are two meanings to the holiness of God. Now, let me say this before we dive in into the definitions of the holiness of God. I want to be very, very basic, very, very simple, very, very plain and very, very clear. I will try as much as possible to avoid all theological jargons and be as simple, as plain, as straightforward as possible. Now, there are two definitions to the holiness of God. There is the primary definition and then there is the secondary definition. There is the primary meaning and there is the secondary meaning. We will start with the primary definition, the primary meaning in this video. And then in the next video, we will consider the secondary definition or the secondary meaning. So let's start with the primary definition. The primary meaning or the primary definition of the holiness of God is that when the Bible says that God is holy, it means that this God is in a class of his own. He is set apart. He is separate. He is unique. He is distinct. He is special. He cannot be compared with anyone or anything. He is set apart from his creation. That is the primary definition. That is the primary meaning of the holiness of God. Let me repeat that. Primarily, when the Bible tells us that God is holy, it means that our God is in a category of his own altogether. That he is in a class of his own altogether. That he is set apart. That he is separate from his creation. That he is so unique and so distinct that he cannot be compared with anyone or anything in his entire creation, both in heaven and on earth. And I'll take you to some few texts and verses in the scriptures that capture that primary definition of the holiness of God. First of all, we'll go to the book of Isaiah chapter 40, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 18, and I'll read. With whom then will you compare God? You see that? That's a rhetoric question. Whom will you compare God? The answer is no one. And it still says, to what image will you compare him? You cannot compare God with anyone, and you cannot compare God with anything or any image. He's so distinct. He's so unique. He's so special. Is in a class and in a category of his own altogether. He cannot be compared with anyone or anything. That was Isaiah chapter 40 verse 18. But we'll read verse 25 as well. The same chapter, Isaiah chapter 40 verse 25. The Lord again is asking, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. To whom 
will you compare me? To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal? Says the Holy One. Who is my equal? Says the Holy One. You cannot compare God with anyone and he is not equal with anyone. He is in a class of his own, in a category of his own, so unique, so distinct, so special. He cannot be compared with anyone or anything. We'll go to Isaiah chapter 44, verse 6 up to verse 8. Isaiah 44, verse 6 up to verse 8, and I'll read with you. This is what the Lord says. Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty. I am the first and I am the last. Excuse me. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people. And what is yet to come? Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble. Do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? That's a rhetoric question. There's no God besides him. No, he answers the question himself. No, there is no other rock. I know not one. There's no other rock. I know not one. We will read chapter 46 of the same book, Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah 46. I will read verse 5 and then I will skip and then read verse 8 up to verse 9. Isaiah 46. I will read verse 5 then skip. Read verse 8 up to verse 9. So verse 5. Isaiah chapter 46. With whom? Will you compare me or count me equal? The same rhetoric question that God is asking. Whom will you compare me with? The answer is no one. To whom will you liken me that we may be compared? Another rhetoric question. No one. Then verse 8 and verse 9. The Lord says, remember this and fix it in mind. Take it to heart, you rebels. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. There is none like me. That is the primary meaning, the primary definition of the holiness of God. That this God is so unique, is so special, is so distinct, is so separate from his creation. He cannot be compared with anyone or anything. He is in a class of his own. He is in a category of his own all together. That's the primary definition, the primary meaning of the holiness of God. We'll end this video at that. And then in the next video, we will uh, consider and learn and study together uh, the secondary definition or the secondary meaning of the holiness of God. I pray and trust that the Lord will use these teachings by uh, His Holy Spirit and help us to truly know who our God is. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.